2016 wasn't a great year, but you've got to admit, it was a really good year for gaming. So much so that I know there's a lot that I missed. But even with that, these are my top 10 games of 2016. Death Road to Canada is an excellent take on the Oregon Trail, only instead of settlers making their way across the frontier, you and your friends are going from Florida to Canada to escape the zombie apocalypse. What makes this one great is the amount of character customization and options you have. Aside from cosmetics, you can create all kinds of characters with a wide array of perks and personality traits which affect their abilities. Mechanics to keep the car running, fighters to stave off the horde, medics to keep the party healed, etc. It provides a great amount of replayability. And it's pretty difficult too, with each death giving you that feeling of SO CLOSE! This next one will definitely be the one! This ties in easily to its roguelike elements, where every time you play and perform specific tasks, your perks that you create characters with improve, slightly increasing your chances of success on every subsequent playthrough. If that isn't enough, there are numerous game modes to try your hand at, secret characters to discover, and of course, more characters to create. The fact that it's two-player cooperative is a fantastic bonus, as you and a friend fight your way through for supplies and make dangerous decisions together. Sadly, it's local only, and if it ever gets online co-op support, I'll immediately play it with the very friends that I forced on my journey with me. Two thousand sixteen was the year that virtual reality games came out of the floodgates. Of them all, the HTC Vive is easily my favorite. The room scale support adds an all new dimension of thinking and playing. Peeking around corners or physically walking around a room to examine it for items or clues is an exhilarating experience. It really is one of those once you see it you'll believe it kind of things. Videos don't do the sense of immersion justice. Plenty of games are silly or casual experiences, but the handful few that give full-fledged adventures are what really impress me. Rather than picking one specific game, I'll simply give it to the platform. The HTC Vive is the best VR hardware you can get, even if the barrier to entry is a pain in the ass. This was a good year for strategy games, and Civilization VI is a prime example of why. It improves upon everything that Civ V had, delicately balancing the feeling of everything being familiar, yet absolutely everything is fresh and new. Using envoys for diplomacy to other civilizations or city-states is great. The use of districts to build out your cities and occupies land is fantastic for strategy and planning, and the culture victory finally makes some goddamn sense. The insane part about this is that what made Civilization V so legendary and long-lasting is how much that game changed and improved with every new expansion pack. The same will undoubtedly happen for Civ VI, which is mind-boggling as the core game is already superb. It's hard to conceive of how it'll improve game mechanics from here, aside from the AI. But I do have a solution for that. Super Hot. Super Hot is a puzzle game under the guise of a first person shooter. Its sole mechanic, time only moves when you do, comes off as a gimmick to stand out in a crowd. But the moment you begin playing, you begin to see how brilliantly it works. It allows you to perform incredible maneuvers that you could only dream of in other games. Shoot one man, throw the empty gun at another, catch his gun in midair and then shoot him with that is all but a small sampling of the possibilities. It's probably been said to death already, but it makes you feel like a goddamn action movie star. And that's rad. It also adds a meta-narrative with talking to an unknown entity and computer hacking, giving a bit more meat to the bones of shooting dude in slow motion in the most badass way possible. The art style is intentionally rudimentary so that every single element in each stage is as clear as possible. The red is bad, and you know exactly what you need to dodge and or kill. And upon each successful mission, you too will be saying out loud, Super hot. Super hot. XCOM 2 rocks! I was a big fan of the 2012 reboot and the sequel does everything better. Reversing roles from the previous game, the aliens have taken over the planet and being a small rebel force creates familiar yet unique gameplay elements. Struggling for supplies and unit ties into being an underpowered team, making every single decision you take vital. 
Sometimes you need to get more scientists over more cash, and dealing with those consequences is never easy. XCOM 2 also addresses the previous game's cheese tactics of waiting as long as you can to superpower your soldiers or equipment. In this one, everything is on a timer. You have so many turns to succeed in a greater variety of missions, and the aliens actively work on the Dark Avatar project, which brings about the doom of humanity. You need to be the driving factor of victory, sabotaging key facilities to slow them down until you're able to overthrow the aliens completely. On top of this, character creation is better than ever with more options, improved classes, and even customizing scientists, engineers, and mission VIPs. Nothing makes a game better than making your squad of soldiers into your friends, making you have a deeper connection with them, and truly mourn each one of their losses. Or getting pissed at them for missing the easiest of shots! He's right there, dude! Come on! Monster Hunter Generations brings new additions to the tried and true series that were sorely needed. The different fight styles alone rejuvenate the gameplay by letting you play closer to your favorite style, whether it's the high-flying aerial attacks or the perfect dodging adept. Add in the new super arts, and you've got a much more refined experience that the series has had to offer in the past. Plus, as a longtime Monster Hunter fan, I absolutely adore getting to return to iconic places of the entire franchise. I'll never get sick of killing the Kutku in the forest and hills. It truly is a love letter for the series' anniversary, and I adored every single returning monster, area, and character to the four different hub cities. I know it's an ongoing joke of myself constantly rating Monster Hunter highly, but I feel that Generations is an overall weaker package than Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Even though it easily has the better gameplay than 4 Ultimate, it lacks the G-Rank monsters we're used to. Thankfully, a G-Rank version is already announced in Japan with more monsters, subspecies, and hunting styles, and I look forward to that making its way westward too. And then I can play as a cat dressed up as a cuckoo some more. <laughs> An unconventional choice, but I don't care. Another Metroid 2 remake is easily one of the best games I played this year. For the uninitiated, AM2R is a remake of Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. Only, it was entirely done by a team of Metroid fans. Their goal was to recreate the oft-forgotten Game Boy original with zero mission graphics, gameplay invoking Super Metroid and Metroid Prime games, and spicing the whole thing up with all new areas, items, and secrets. It's the kind of new 2D Metroid fans have been demanding since Other M. I know it's bizarre putting this on here when it isn't an official Nintendo game, but the thing is, I don't believe Nintendo could have pulled it off as good as the AM2R team did. The music remixes, perfect controls, and the kind of Metroid gameplay by fans, for fans. And of course, Nintendo shut the whole thing down mere days after its release, so it is no longer officially supported. But it was already on the internet. And as you know, once something is on the internet, it's always on the internet. Asagao Academy Normal Boots Club is simply wonderful. It's a visual novel dating sim about Hana Mizuno, who enters a new school and meets every single boy of the Normal Boots Club. And those boys happen to be myself and all my friends from Normal Boots and Hidden Block. Peanut Butter Gamer, The Completionist, Brutal Moose, every single one of us. Full disclosure, I had nothing to do with the development of this game. We lent our likenesses in some simple voice acting, but that's it. No input, no idea of the direction or script or whatever. That's why the numerous paths and numerous endings for every character was so enjoyable. Even though it's based around parody, satire, and comedy, there's genuine emotion throughout every single sentence written. It's intentionally tropey to draw out humor, but it's easy to find yourself attached to the main characters. Is putting this game here on the list nepotism at its finest? Yep, but I don't care. It's too well done to be ignored. And best of all, you can play it for absolutely free. If you enjoy visual novels, or just want a game with great characters, humor, and emotion, play Asagao Academy. And then date me, I'm the best one. Totally. I promise. Doom is the best AAA game I played this year. A revitalization of a childhood classic for what is most likely every single gamer ever, 
Doom absolutely nails everything that made that original game so fun and improved upon it in every way imaginable. After a decade of first person shooters making you hide behind chest high walls, regenerating health and slowly picking off enemies until you go down the next corridor and do that again. Doom's brilliant mechanic forces you to be in the face of demons, constantly moving around and murdering the shit out of them. The best way to replenish health, armor, or ammo is to damage enemies into a staggering state and then performing absolutely brutal glory kills at melee range. These are fast, visceral, and satisfying every time, making additional item drops appear, incentivizing you to go balls to the wall. But my absolute favorite aspect of Doom, aside from the gorgeous environments, secrets galore, and of course the Doom guy himself, is what makes this game so brilliant. This has some of the best level design I've ever had the pleasure of playing. You know that feeling you get when you play most shooters and you enter an area with a bunch of obvious chest high walls and you think to yourself, well, here it comes. Not with Doom. Instead, every new area is a playground presented to you with possibilities. Even if you don't know it, you create constant forward motion attack patterns to continuously move around killing every damn demon in sight. Doom is an absolute joy to play every single battle. Even just recording footage for this right now has me yearning to go back and rip and tear my way through hell. No single game this year will charm you the way that Stardew Valley will. A game following the spirit of Harvest Moon, but with so much more. Stardew Valley's greatest strength is its unbridled sense of wonder. There are so many small things to discover about its world that every day you wake up and work on your farm, a sense of excitement builds inside of you to discover every single secret this game has to offer. Whether it's exploring different caverns, or building relationships with the game's numerous townspeople, or seeing what each day brings to your farm, Stardew Valley keeps you hooked and coming back. The game is so wonderful and it took so much of my time, I devoted an entire video discussing the merits of this one game, and I don't regret a single second playing it. It's an incredible project completed by a single person. He did all of it, and it's still being updated with new options, features, and is finally available on console platforms. The moment the online co-op patch hits, I know I'll immediately get sucked right back into Stardew Valley. You're gonna have to let me know what games did I miss? I know I missed some. There are so many good games in 2016, like Dark Souls 3. I never got a chance to play that. I just didn't have the time for it. I don't know what happened. So please, you're going to have to let me know and just focus on the really, really good games of 2016. But now that you've watched that, you want to see some shit? <laughs>